In this video, I'm gonna show you a unique way to find products to sell on Amazon. We're also going to talk about how to assess demand and realistically what the trajectory is when you first start selling in terms of actually making a profit and then scaling your business. Hello everyone, it's Sajad, hope you're doing well. So let's get straight into it. I'm here on amazon.co.uk. One of my favorite kind of techniques over the years when it comes to looking for new products is a random word generator. I'll show you why in just a minute. Now there's nothing wrong with using the existing product research software like Helium 10 and Jungle Scout, although you have to be careful sometimes. If you over filter or you're using the same filters everybody else is using, then you end up sometimes finding products which can suddenly become a little bit saturated. Now that's an extreme kind of scenario, but it can happen and I have seen it happen before. So what I tend to do, I'm on here right now on randomwordgenerator.com. <laughs> you can use any website for this, but really what happens here on this website doesn't matter. It's our appraisal process after that's more important. And remember on some of these marketplaces, like for example, the UK, there could be 60, 70 million products or more to choose from. So sometimes people say all the good products are taken and stuff like that. That's obviously not true. It's a massive market and there's a lot of space, even in existing niches where there's already a lot of sellers. And let me just show you that right now. The reason it can potentially work is the market size is so big. So keyword demand for a product, let's say we're searching for a coffee cup, year on year on the marketplace is increasing. So let's say five years ago, there were 20,000 searches for this. Today, that might be 200,000 searches for that word. So there's gonna be more customers purchasing in that niche here in 2021, let's say. So potentially there's more space in that market. And that doesn't mean to say that you can just launch any coffee cup and it'll be perfectly fine. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is you can still find a lot of demand in many, many niches when it comes to selling on Amazon. But more on that in just a minute. So what I do here at the moment is set to the word horror. So all I do is I just click on generate random words and let's see what comes up. So I click on it and we see front. Right, so that, you know, there's not much to go on, but let's type it into Amazon Auto Suggest and see what kind of niches come up. So I just go up to the search bar and I type in front and then a space. And then I see these are the most common searches when somebody types in front and then space. So it could be bras for women. It could be a doormat outside, a bike light. And what I'm looking for here, what I'm interested in, especially if you're a complete beginner, is I'm looking at, already looking at some of these products and I'm thinking, is that kind of light and something that I'd be able to actually launch on Amazon as a beginner when I don't understand the ins and outs of sea shipping and I don't want to deal with all of the delays and issues? Well, potentially, yes. So why don't we look at something like a door lock or a door light or even a door plant? Let's have a look at door lights first of all. So front door lights. Again, I haven't done anything fancy yet. I've just found a random word to start my search because it really doesn't matter how you come up with a product idea. You could have a friend or family member suggest something to you, like an iPhone cover, and you can check it on here, and then you can get back to them and tell them that was a rubbish idea, and that's okay too. Um, but here you can see price point is very, very good for a front door light. But I mean, are these kind of heavy products? Is there too much competition at the moment? I'm seeing listings here with only 22 reviews and a listing here with 26 reviews. Obviously they're running some uh, deals on that particular product at the moment, but that's kind of a good sign. You don't wanna see a front page full of listings with hundreds of thousands of reviews. Again, I'm seeing here only 10 reviews, uh, a nice kind of simple looking product. This is an up and down solar wall light, so power saving. So what is the next step? So we can see here, potentially all looks well in terms of qualitative analysis so far. So that's just me kind of going through the listings, having a look and getting an idea of what this niche really is. I need to consider a lot of things from here. For example, is this a product that sells all year round or is it just gonna sell for Christmas? And that's important because as a beginner, you don't wanna get stuck, for example, in a product that doesn't sell all year round because you want consistent recurring income. Later down the line, you can always launch products related to a particular time of year. Also, what I wanna do is click into one of these listings and I just wanna have a look and get an idea of how heavy this product is. Like, can we actually airship this product? That's something that I'd be curious about. So let me just open a couple of these in a new tab. So just looking at this, what I tend to do is just scroll down. Let's have a look at the product information. Okay, it was launched in June, 2020. So it's been selling for over a year. It's not got that many ratings in that year. That's good as well because kind of review velocity is kind of standard and normal 
It's not something that's extreme. I don't want to see a product that was just launched a few months ago and it's already got thousands of reviews. That suggests that the volume of sales is very high, which is fine, but you're dealing with a kind of high end when it comes to Amazon sellers, people who already perhaps have email lists and lots and lots of other strategies when it comes to getting reviews, even perhaps paying for reviews, which is something we don't want to do and we don't want to get involved with. Here, package dimensions, you can get an idea of the size of the product. Now, the product is a little bit heavy. You can see that it's just under a kilogram. Typically, what you'd be looking for is something around maximum, I'd say 300 grams or so, if you're selling, for example, here in the UK. And the reason for that is it's just more cost effective when it comes to air shipping. Once it gets to this size, you only really should be sea shipping that product because the cost would be so high, it would really eat into your net profit margin. We can do a lot of the research a little bit faster and that's where the software Chrome extensions come in. So for example, to assess this page, because the other thing I need to know is, are these products selling? Just because they have a thousand reviews or 600 reviews doesn't mean this product is making 50, 60,000 in revenue per month. That doesn't automatically mean that because this product could have been selling for the last 20 years on Amazon. So you have to then do the research. So the method can be random in terms of getting to this point where I am now, which was random, but now I really need to start digging into the numbers. This is a business at the end of the day and numbers are very, very important. So this part now is what we might call the quantitative analysis. So this is looking at the hard data, the numbers, and it makes for some interesting reading. First thing is you want to ignore the sponsored listings at the top because they're artificially placed there and we're not interested in that. And I'll explain why in just a minute. What I'm interested in are the organic rankings. So everything from underneath there. How much revenue are they making? How many sales are they making per month? That's what I'm interested in. And I can see here the uh, products which have less reviews, they're still making some sales. So you can see here, for example, review counts. You can see here 10, eight reviews, 43 reviews. However, in terms of revenue, they're still making decent revenue. However, it's not earth shattering. Uh, 700 pounds, 1500 pounds. Now, in my experience, this tends to be an underrepresentation, maybe by 20 or 30% in terms of the actual numbers. So that's a good thing. You don't want it to be kind of over-representing how much you could potentially make. So that's not a bad thing. Again, looking further down, you can still see decent revenue figures. So what else are we looking at here in terms of kind of revenue and whether this is a viable product to kind of go after and research further? Because what you want to do at the beginning is you want to skim in terms of analysis. You do not have time to go through hundreds of thousands of products in terms of your product research. So you have to do this part very quickly. It should only take a few minutes and it's a simple yes or no of whether you want to proceed further. So just then I talked about organic sales. Well, basically your trajectory when it comes to launching a product at the beginning to where you're gonna be in six to 12 months time, at that point, you wanna be making the majority of your sales as organic, meaning there's no sponsorship, there's no paid advertising, you're not running any traffic to your listing, it's all organic, meaning people are just seeing your listing, they're searching for front door light, they're buying your product, at least let's say 70, 80% of the time, and you're only paying the Amazon FBA fees and the commission, that's all and consistently you're making those sales because this is your bread and butter, this is your cash cow, this is your consistent income potentially around here. That's why I'm more interested in how much money the organic uh, listings are making at the top, let's say first half of the first page. They're making consistent sales. What that means is, let's get back onto um, the uh, Chrome extension here. What that means is the better listings here, for example, let's say the ones who are doing 16,000. I know they have a lot of reviews, but honestly, after you've got a hundred or so reviews, it doesn't matter. You can't really differentiate because on your listing and their listing, people are gonna see the best reviews, the most critical reviews, and the numbers are less kind of important. Now, in terms of that 16,000, they might be making, let's say, just throw a number out there, let's say 5,000 or 6,000 net profit, for example. That's consistent income for them. So I wouldn't expect next month this 16,000 revenue to suddenly go down to zero. Sometimes people ask me that. If my product's selling well, what if next month it goes down to zero? <laughs> if something's happened to your listing or Amazon have taken down your listing or something like that in a rare scenario, that can happen. But generally, that should not happen. And just remember on this listing, for example, let's open one of these up. Nothing's gonna change here. You're not really gonna change the title or the pictures or mess around with the description. Why? Well, it's working. It's working already. You're already well ranked. Don't mess things up. <laughs> like you don't wanna break anything that's working. It's clearly got a very good price point. So I feel like the profit margins would be good on this product. Just go down and just check the weight. Very likely this one probably see ship because you see it's 710 grams. However, that's where the consistent income comes in. So potentially in this niche, if you can rank high, 
you it could be a goal for you. However, for me, if I was recommended someone brand new, for me, the sales are kind of low for those listings that have less reviews. And the other thing I'd be concerned about is the weight of the product. It'd be a complicated process. It will tie down your cash if you're going by sea shipping. And especially as a beginner, you want to kind of flip your first set of products quickly. So I hope that helps. That's just some initial things that I look for when I'm researching a new product. Now let's talk about the realistic trajectory when it comes to selling on Amazon and brand new products. Realistically, you've got what I would say is a 12 month time frame. Let's just call that zero months, three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months here. That's the 12 month time frame. When you first start, you're investing in your product. Let's say you invest 1,000 pounds or dollars into your product at the beginning. What you have to understand about this process is, as I've just explained earlier, a lot of your sales might be coming from sponsored advertising at the beginning to get the ball rolling. Because every time you make a sale, you get bumped up in the Amazon listing. So let's say you're on page three, you get moved to page two and then to page one. Why is that? Well, if we look through the listings again, so if you just look through these here, let me just take off the Chrome extension. Why are Amazon showing these products at the top? They're doing that because they tend to get the most sales. And the way the algorithm works is Amazon wants to make more money the same way we want to make as much money as possible. So that's why Amazon shows these listings at the top because they tend to sell very well. People see them, click on it, and 25% or more of the time they just buy the product. Because remember, people are shopping on Amazon with intent. They're typing in front door light and then they're purchasing the product. They're not here to research or browse around. They might use other websites for that, like Google, for example. Here, they just want to buy the product and they don't want to waste time. And if it's a sponsored ad, they don't really care. They'll just click on it and they'll buy it. However, with a sponsored ad, obviously, if you have less reviews, you need to differentiate, for example, on price, which is why you might see the price lower than the existing listing, because you have to do that to get the ball rolling. So that's why at the beginning, your price may be lower. So the price may be lower. You may be spending a little bit more on advertising. And because of that, your profit margins will be lower. So after you sell all of your 1,000 of products, you might come back with profit of uh, just including your initial amount. They, uh, Amazon might send you one and a half thousand or 1,800. It depends on your ROI of your product. I'll get on, onto that in another video. But that's what happens at the beginning. But understand that as you go along this process and your organic ranking improves, the amount you spend will go down on sponsoring your listing. The amount potentially of profit will go up because you will slowly increase your price. Because once you've got 100 reviews and you're competing with all of the top sellers on that page, you can move your price up to 40 pounds. Obviously, you need to do that in increments and slowly. However, if you keep maintaining your volume of sales, you can absolutely do that. And then you can play around with the numbers here because yeah, it's all well and good making 4,000 or 5,000 in revenue. But if you can make 4,000 in revenue instead of 5,000, but you can do it at a much better profit margin, that makes sense for your business because then you can launch a second product instead. So you can take the hit when it comes to actual number of sales. However, you can launch a next product with a better profit margin because you want to be selling this listing and this product for years to come, not only a few weeks here and there. This is not a quick method, Amazon, when it comes to uh, uh, flipping money or quick, quickly making money overnight. That's not what this is. This is a long-term business. You're creating a real Amazon store. You're creating a real recurrent passive income. It's not easy. This initial part, that's where the kind of hard work is. So I would say this first kind of three months, this is where you do most of your work because you don't know anything. So you have to learn everything at the beginning. Once you get to six months, it kind of becomes routine. Yes, you uh, have to deal with the odd issue, but remember, your listing's already done. If it's already making sales, you don't need to do anything. You can have fun and start researching your next product because once you get to the 12-month part, this will just be consistent monthly recurring income. And that's the aim here. Again, not easy, a lot of work at the beginning. However, the goal is clear. And remember, there's no ceiling to how many products you can launch. This is product number one. What's to stop you adding four more products? This is an online business. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Now, at the moment, we run a detailed coaching program and we do support you right through this period at the moment. And if you'd like to work with us, you can apply. It's the first link in the description below. And we'll hop on a call. I'll discuss with you in terms of exactly what you want to do, what your budget is, what your goals are with this business. And I'll be honest with you. And if I don't think it's a good one for you, then I'll just tell you that because honestly, this is not for everyone. This is a real business. And if you think it's just, if you just want to make some quick money online, this is definitely not for you. So don't waste your time. However, if you're committed and you understand 
that you'll be working for the first few weeks and you'll see nothing in terms of fruits of your labor, absolutely nothing. However, everything comes later down the road, then potentially, yes, this absolutely is one for you to consider. And obviously, Amazon is not going anywhere. It's here to stay. It keeps picking up more and more of the market share when it comes especially to online sales. So that's it for this one. I hope it's helpful. Please comment below if you have any questions. Thanks very much for listening.